How's it going guys? Welcome back to Crafting Cars. In today's video we're going to be installing Charlie Moore's Dorioku rear crash bar on our 1997 Honda Civic and we're going to be laying down some more paint. Now the first thing I had to do before starting this video today was clean up this garage because we got pretty messy in here with all our projects that I had to wrap up before we went on our Florida vacation. But now it's spick and span in here and I got the car back on the ground and we are ready for this crash bar install. So first things first, you gotta pop the trunk to remove the old crash bar. Obviously if you don't have your bumper off yet, gotta remove that. I gotta be fast <laughs> with this guy because it is carbon fiber and it's very light and it just springs up like nobody's business. So to access the bolts to remove the old crash bar is pretty easy. Now getting that rear bumper cover off is actually pretty simple. They just got the push rivets that go into these holes here. I know there's a couple push rivets where it clips in down below. And then it's got some Phillips head screws kind of on the inside where your wheel well liner attaches. I'm sure you can find another video online, but it's simple enough. You could probably just figure it out. Otherwise, so these bolts for the crash bar are right under these flaps on either side. So I'll just have to lift up a little bit, get my little custom trunk plate out of the way. You can see we got two, looks like 17 millimeter bolts on this side. And the same thing over here. I'm gonna see if I can get those bolts out with this big old ratchet here in our 17 millimeter socket. I wouldn't be surprised if we need a breaker bar or a impact though, but we'll see. I really fight you coming out. There must be quite a bit of rust on these bolts. And that's four. Now for this next part, I recommend you put on a good set of gloves, especially if you were not up to date on your tetanus shot. Oh my goodness, this thing's just like paper mache. There we go. Jeez. Not much left there. I cannot tell you guys how relieved I am that Charlie Moore came out with the rear crash bar. I could not wait to get this old crusty one off my car. Because as you guys know, I am not a big fan of rust. <laughs> Another good thing about this crash bar is Charlie provides new hardware. These are grade 10.9 zinc coated bolts. Since that looks so clean, I want to clean up the area where the bar is going to be installed. Once I get all the rust off, get it sanded and cleaned up, I'll go ahead and spray this area with the same Summit Racing Gloss Black we've been using. And that's really going to make the red crash bar pop once we get it installed. With our factory paint all scuffed up and all our rust flakes wire wheeled away, we are ready to begin masking. All right guys, I got everything masked off that I wanted and it is finally time to spray. I figured I might as well hit the roof with the gloss black as well since we're already spraying it and I wanted to hit that panel anyway. We're still using the same single stage um, urethane Summit Racing gloss black paint um, with urethane, urethane activator and reducer uh, rated for below 70 degrees, so fast temp. It's about 65 degrees in here right now. Um, I've got a small heater and a box fan just to try to maintain that temperature as best as I can. But yeah, the weather is perfect today. Much better than when we were trying to spray in the garage when it was like 30 degrees outside. Man, that gets tricky because you lay it down, it looked good. You walk away for 30 minutes, you come back and all your paint's running down the side of the car. So we should be able to avoid that today. Underneath where the crash bar is, if I can hit everything with like two light to medium coats, I'll be happy with that. And then the roof, I want to hit that with three coats. I think that's all I got. So I'll start mixing some paint. I will wipe down everything with our Prep ball, wax and grease remover, and then of course hit it with the tack cloth to try to get all the dirt and everything out of the paint. 
Once that comes back clean, I don't feel any imperfections. We are ready to spray, so please enjoy. I tell you what guys, today was the best painting day I've ever had. I've already got my gun taken apart, cleaning it with some lacquer thinner right now. I think the paint was drying, oh my God, it was drying so nice. Definitely a little on the fast side, since this is supposed to be uh, you know, curing just under 70 degrees. I think with the hot air coming through our Apollo paint system, it probably spraying like 80, 90 degree air. So with that taken into account, maybe we should have used medium today. However, I just kind of had to adapt my style. I noticed when I was doing the top of the car, it was drying really fast and it's kind of had a pretty gnarly texture to it. So I was just gonna do three coats. I laid a pretty heavy third coat thinking it was gonna fix it, but no, there was still quite a bit of orange peel. So then on the fourth coat, I laid it on real heavy. Still a tiny bit of orange peel, but I'm really happy with that. And spraying at night with the lights on, with the garage door cracked, I was a little worried about bugs and we only got one bug in the paint right around there. And another issue I was having was the top of my paint gun wasn't sealed perfectly. So you know, you might have noticed I wrapped that uh, microfiber towel around the top. I had one drop going to the paint, um, but like a user suggested on one of my old videos, keep a little bit of masking tape on hand. And what you can do is when you get a drip on your paint, uh, I should have a clip. I just go ahead and I just kind of touch it just to kind of suck up that paint under the tape. And it worked pretty good because you guys would never be able to tell there was a drip up here. Now, the bottom portion here turned out good. I didn't even use a tack cloth on this. I just did the wax and grease remover and let her rip with two medium coats. And yeah, it looks really nice. You can tell I was really careful on dialing in my gun because I did not want to mess this up. Yeah, I think with the ambient temperature in the garage today, the good airflow we had in here, we had the best painting day ever by far. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take off the masking tomorrow when I get home from work. I gotta eat dinner and head into work pretty soon here, but I cannot wait to see how this looks. All right, we're waiting all night for this. Now the paint turned out nice, but before I get distracted and take a bunch of videos of that, let's get this crash bar installed and go over why it's so special. This is the meat and potatoes of the video after all. So I'm excited with the new hardware. We'll go ahead and put some anti-seize on the threads. And since we got nice clean threads here and brand new threaded inserts on this crash bar, we should go in way easier than the old one came out. Oh yeah, much better, just threads in by hand. We'll get these nice and tight, just like they were from the factory. Man, oh man, does that look good. So I hope you guys are stoked on these results and this crash bar as I am. Because oh my goodness, does that look good. So quick specs about this crash bar. It is 1020 steel. Uh, this is DOM 1.5 inch tubing here. And it is 
13 gauge, so this is 13 gauge steel tubing, but the mounting plate itself is 10 gauge, so it's even stronger. Uh, all the welds are TIG welded, it's really good fabrication. He even has little TIG weld tacks holding on his Dorioku logo, which is a really nice touch. It's got slots here for your standard T-hook towing adapters. Otherwise, it has a M12 by 1.75 little threaded bung here, so you can have a threaded tow hook. You get a discount on this bar if you had already purchased the front track bar. I've got a video on that as well. I'll link that down in the description. There is three tiers of powder coating options, and you could do zinc coating as well. So it matches like the factory zinc coated Honda hardware, which is a really cool feature. Yeah, I could go on and on about this thing. I'll include a page at the end of the video with all the frequently asked questions and extra details on this bar. And then of course, you can contact Charlie Moa at Charlie Moa Doryoku Instagram. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps me out. I cannot recommend this product enough. It gets a 10 out of 10 from me. Would recommend to a friend. These things are track tested. Charlie does a good job talking to his customers, getting feedback and making sure he releases banger products. And if you got the front crash bar, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.